So you can feel in your bones that it's time for a change, but you're still questioning it. You're still wondering if you can really do this, whether you are considering letting something go or welcoming in something new. Guess what? We go through pivots in our business, pivots in our life, pivots in our relationship, and pivots in our routine. And the best way to navigate this is through our intuition. So I'm going to be helping you avoid hitting the spiritual brick wall by giving you some signs that it's time to pivot following your intuition. So stay tuned. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guides. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. New years, new cycles. That's been the theme so far this January. But throughout our lives, we actually go through pivots, pivots and changes. So today, that's what we're talking about. But let's see what the cards have to say. The first card I have here is receive. Abundance is yours. Allow yourself to receive. Sometimes we literally block our pivots because we're too afraid to let go or we're too afraid of what's on the other side of where you're at right now. And the next card I have here is the owl. Listen to your inner voice instead of everybody else's opinions. That's really important. So when we're going through pivots and changes in our lives, you've got to rely on your intuition and your spirit guides, your higher self and your own energy. But so many times we go outside of ourselves to ask for other people's opinions because we're too scared to actually listen to ourselves. I see this with students that I work with inside of four intuitive languages, they question what they're getting. It is actually easier to read for yourself than to read for other people. Absolutely. Because we are the ones that validate what we're getting for ourselves, while other people validate for us when we're doing readings for people. So if you take that in for just a minute, You could understand that if that's kind of our pattern, we're looking to people for answers, it's harder to trust ourselves. And so, you know, my mission is to help you trust your intuition and your decisions, even when everybody else is telling you their own stuff. It's been a theme in my life. I don't know if it's been a theme in yours. If it has, reach out to me over on Instagram and let me know. But I've had many times where... My intuition did not make sense with logic and my family didn't agree with what I was doing. So you might feel this too, especially when a pivot involves financial decisions like your career. So the most important thing I can say as to how to navigate a pivot and how to know what to change and when to do it is of course to work with your spirit guides and develop your intuition, which is what I'm all about and what I teach. And, you know, if you're feeling the call to finally do that, I'll drop the link in the show notes to my program. But really, this episode is about identifying when it's time for a change. If you don't make the change, you are going to go against, literally run into the spiritual brick wall. So we get the feelings the knowings, the butterfly feeling of, hey, it's time for a change. This can come in, depending on your intuitive language, in a whisper, like, hey, Whitney, go do this thing. It also can sound like your inner reading voice, which is what happens most of the time. So maybe you're sitting there and you're in your bed or you're just zoning out and you get this, it's time for a change. It's time to do X, Y, Z. Well, that is your intuition talking to you. But maybe right before you wake up, right before you fall asleep in your meditation, when you're talking to spirit guides, you will see like a big red light or you'll see a stop sign or you'll see a pivot in a road or you'll see something you need to be doing. And that will come through in clairvoyance. Maybe it's a feeling. I just know something's going to change and I just don't want to have to go through it. I just don't want to do it. Well, then that's 
the empath talking to you. And the channeler, it comes with your body. And I get this so much. All the pivots I've had in my life that are big life changes, especially when it comes to career, my body tells me it's time. And sometimes I cannot make sense of it logically. My throat will close up. I have gotten sick before where I have to take time away. And it's really important to listen to that. And I know I'm coming up against a pivot again. This entire year, I have really focused on my health and and doing much better, by the way, like seriously. So just a side note here, if you're someone that has allergies, an autoimmune issue, Dr. Brooke Goldner, you can look her up. I've been doing her smoothie diet and my blood work came back fine. It's just such a great diet, I think, for people who are sensitive anyway, because it decreases inflammation in the body. And so my body is really food sensitive and environmentally sensitive. I'm allergic to all the things. So this has been amazing. But okay, let's get back to the story here. My body is telling me, Whitney, you're sensitive. And not just because of the health, like I'm allergic to food, allergic to environmental allergies. It is also a sign for me to slow down, pay attention to my health, pay attention to my body. Yesterday, I noticed that when I was working, I got drained. I got really, really drained and tired. And when I had taken the previous four days off, I was full of energy. I was up, I was cleaning out my closet, you know, to the end of the day, that kind of stuff. Yesterday, I had to stop working, took a nap in between my live events. So you have to listen to your body. Now, there are other factors, of course, your physical health. There are factors like the full moon, the new moon, whatever's going on, astrology, energy. But for me, I've been getting this message like you need to take time off. You need to pivot. That Something's coming. Something's happening. And spirit's not really sharing with me exactly what it is. I just know I need to listen. So that's an example that I'm actually going to have a conversation with my husband later on today about some things that I probably need to pause on with my schedule. So that's an example of how are you feeling? How is your body feeling? Is your body allowing you to move forward or not? And pay attention to the different intuitive languages and how it comes in for you. Now, another real clear symptom is not loving it any more. Whatever you're doing that you used to love, if you're not loving it, whether it's a relationship, a routine, something you're eating, your job, your purpose, you know, whatever it is, if you're not loving it anymore, first and foremost, take some time off to just recalibrate your energy because sometimes we are giving way too much. And when we're giving way too much, we need to retract our energy to conserve some for ourselves. And so that's a first thing that I would say to do is make sure that you're doing self-care. But if you are, and you still don't love it, it's time for a change. And it's time for a pivot. That's really clear. I know several people who last year felt this, they don't want to do this anymore with their job. And sometimes it was a job that somebody had just taken to pay the bills. And sometimes it was a job that was their life purpose. They had started their own business and so many people were not loving it anymore. And that's happened to me throughout my career in what I love. So when I started my business, I was doing readings and Reiki. And then at some point in my life, I wasn't loving it. I felt this call to completely teach, start teaching. And then I loved it. And then I kept doing it. And then I felt, okay, Whitney, it's time to 100% teach and give up your office space. And I was resisting that like a little kid throwing a tantrum. It took me six months to let go of my office space. But I'm really glad I listened because we let go of it the month before the pandemic hit. 
So I'm glad I listened to spirit, but also that's what I wanted to do. Now I'm being called to do some sort of pivot, but I don't know what it is yet. So we'll find out, but guess what I'm going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is take some time to go inward and see what that looks like for me. Another symptom, it's time for a pivot, is when it's not easy anymore. Relationships, job, whatever it is, when it's not easy anymore. Now, I say this with a caveat. Spiritual growth is not often easy. And just because something is not easy does not mean that we give up on it. Things require work. But this is a call. It's a sign to, again, reevaluate. Go inward. Is this something that I still love? Is this something that I still feel called to put energy and effort into? And if it is, then find a solution to work past it. Just because your your business or your job or your relationship has speed bumps does not mean it's not meant for you. I really detest the excuse of, well, if it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be and it'll just be easy. I'm like, um, no. If you want to expand your energy and you want to grow spiritually, it's not always going to be easy, but it can be a trigger, a sign for you to just reevaluate. Do I still love it? Okay, if I do, then I'm going to put the work into it. Do I still want this for myself? So for instance, let's say you want to write a book. And you are coming up into hurdles with writing the chapters, or you're coming up to hurdles with finding an agent or whatever it is. Well, ask yourself, do I still really feel it is my soul's mission, my goal, my intuitive hunch, whatever you want to call it, to write the book? If it's yes, then continue forward. If you feel like that's too much work, mm, reevaluate. How much is this worth to you? Because if it is worth something, then keep going. But if you're like, my priorities have changed and shifted, and now other things are more important to me, then hey, guess what? It's probably time to leave that and it's time for a pivot. All right. So let's talk about more symptoms and signs when we come back. It's the new year and it's time to set those intentions. I know that we get to a place where we feel like, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm on my spiritual path. Now, what the F do I do? And that's why I created my Align Spiritual Mentorship Program. Inside this program, we are consistent with developing our intuition and staying aligned in our energy and to our life path, purpose, and abundance. Aligned is a mentorship program at a membership price. This is ongoing. So we have something every week and every month, there is a new theme. It's different. It's not a course. We have a training program to help you raise your vibration, but really it's a coaching program where I'm gonna be doing channeled messages every month. I give you a meditation every month, a new theme to focus on in your energy and hot seats with me. So I answer your questions and help shift your energy to the next level. Everyone's next level looks really different. But one thing is true. We have to be consistent in our spiritual growth or we start to stagnate. It's just like dusting our house. Guess what? We dust and there's more dust that comes in. Sometimes we think we've gotten to the top of the mountain, but we actually need to keep training our energy to stay aligned. And we are ever-changing beings, and so is our path. So we have to be open to pivots. So I'd love for you to apply for Aligned. This is a perfect time in the new year. You can go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash Aligned and submit your application. This membership is for people who are not at the very beginning of their spiritual journey. This is to stay consistent. And it's perfect if you've worked with me before, but we are now opening up applications to people who have not taken my courses before. Messengerofspirit.com forward slash aligned. Welcome back. We're talking about how to know when it's time for a change so you don't hit the spiritual brick wall because you first get those little signs and symptoms about it's time for a change. And if you don't listen, spirit hits you over the head a little bit stronger and you don't want to get kind of knocked down. And you really don't listen, you hit the brick wall. And I've hit the brick wall so many times where I've been completely sick 
Like my body tends to get sick. And there are other symptoms for other people too, where it just feels like chaos. So it reminds me of when you know a relationship needs to end and you hang on and it gets worse and worse and unhealthy. That's the same thing for anything. And everything is a relationship. So this is kind of like, hey, let's talk about how to identify when a relationship is unhealthy. But really, I'm talking about a relationship with all the things. So we've talked about feeling and in your body and how it might come through for your intuition, not loving things anymore. And when it's not easy, the next symptom is you literally will get messages from your spirit guides, which pretty much goes with the first thing I said. But if you are one of my students, you know, I ask you to talk to your spirit guides five to 15 minutes each day. And you might be getting the same message over and over. And maybe you're pulling Oracle cards and your messages are like, stop, pause, you know, don't do this. Or people don't love it when they get my card in the deck that says you're blocking what you need to receive. Stop and just go within. When you're getting these messages over and over, maybe you hear them everywhere. Then that's a message. Now, sometimes you hear messages that are good messages too. Like everywhere I go, I keep getting Italy messages. Well, sometimes when you know you need to pause and stop, I will also get messages for myself. You know, what's funny is I have students inside of my Aligned Spiritual Mentorship Program that say to me, Whitney, thank you. You told me X, Y, Z. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember saying that because I don't remember because it's really from spirit. I'm just channeling whatever comes out of my mouth. And they repeat it back to me sometimes months later, sometimes years later, sometimes a week later, sometimes in the moment. And I go, oh, that sounds really cool. Oh, shit. That's a message for me, too. So sometimes we got to take our own advice, but the messages will come in so many different times. If you are someone who's in the spiritual community, maybe your friends say, you know what? I feel like you need to not do it. I feel like you need to stop. And then another friend says the same thing. Or maybe your friends are telling stories about other people and it's the same thing that you need to hear. So you get messages from your spirit guides. Now, another symptom that's really easy peasy to recognize is you are drained and tired when you're doing the thing. I kind of alluded to this earlier about me being drained, but I'm going to give you a different example. I am an introvert, but sometimes people will kind of look at me funny, like, well, you got to be an extrovert. I'm like, no, I'm like a extrovert and introvert. So when I am out and feeling aligned in crowds with people who are similar vibration and we're talking about something, it's just really harmonious and I feel really lit up in the moment. But guess what? I get really tired and drained. So the other day, I had four appointments. I had a meeting with my team. I had a Q&A session in one of my programs. I had a podcast interview and I had an interview for a summit. And in between the last couple appointments, I was dead tired, so drained, so ready to just go to sleep. And I said to my guides, I've got an hour in between these live events. So I'm just going to do some of this work. And they were like, no, you have to conserve your energy for this last extroverted event if you want good energy. And I said, but I'm not using my voice. I'm not recording a podcast. I'm not recording a meditation. I'm just writing. And they're like, Whitney, it's a throat chakra energy. You're expressing yourself. But even if it wasn't, you need to go rest. So I listened, but I was reflecting. And what I reflected on was what no longer needs to be in my schedule are four events on Zoom or where I'm speaking. And even furthermore, the message I got was you really only need like maximum of two of those a day because I'm primarily an introvert and my energy gets drained. The great news is when I'm there live, whether I'm being interviewed for whatever or being live in one of my communities and doing coaching and mentorship, I feel lit up in the moment because I love these people and I love the audience and I love the message that I'm sharing. But I am seeing that my body is like, even though you love it, you need to do something different. Your routine is not working for you. You need to change that routine. 
that's an example of how I said, wait a minute, my body is tired. What does this mean? So I had to go through, do I not like the job? Do I not like what I'm saying? Do I not like the people that I'm with? And it was like, no, you still like your job. (laughs) No, you still like the people. No, you still like the message. It is just the amount of extroverted tasks in your day. Like your social battery is drained. I was like, okay. So that's what you can do is reevaluate. Now, here's another fun one. It's not really fun, but, but we can look at it and think it's funny afterwards. It is when your inner child throws a tantrum. And I have done this so many times. So I am a channeler. I have all the intuitive languages, but my channeler is the second. My first is the clairvoyance. So this year, but my second is channeler. So claircognizance and my body is very intuitive and very sensitive too. And when I used to do one-on-one appointments on the phone, especially, and sometimes in person as well, my body wanted to just get up and walk out, just walk out, go outside. And in between appointments, I'd let myself do that. But I threw a tantrum like inside and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do it. I hate it. This sucks. I don't want to be here. And I had to go, what is wrong? Like, I like giving readings. And when I'm giving readings, I feel great and amazing. And every time after I'm done with my Reiki session or my reading, I felt lit up and peaceful and good. So I had to really go, well, what am I not loving about this? You know, what is not working for me here? And so one of the messages was the stuff that I am doing every day. I'm packing too many things in one day. I'm packing too many extroverted activities. So same message, but I had to really reevaluate and say, well, what else is going on? Like, why am I throwing a tantrum? Another message was, all right, you're throwing this tantrum because you need more free time in general, not just in your day, but in your week, in your month. Like you need to have more fun. You're being too serious, too regimented, too scheduled, too routine oriented. It's like, okay, but guess what? I did those things and it still didn't feel like that was right. And one of the reasons is because I had been getting messages from my spirit guides. It was time to go full-time teaching. So guess what? I eventually finally listened because my throat shut down and I wasn't able to swallow and I wasn't able to talk. So I said, all right, guess I'm not going to be doing any readings anymore. So I needed that last nudge, but I hit the brick wall. And I don't want you to have to do that, but that's an example. And that was in one part of my life And guess what? That part might be changing. Maybe I go back to readings. Maybe I go back to appointments. Who knows? I am starting to feel that connectedness. Like I want more connection. I don't know what that looks like yet, but you've got to listen. And I'm just giving you examples from my life because when we do that, we start to get to the bottom of it. And I have some clients and students that do the same. So with People that I've coached, sometimes they say, no, Whitney, I keep getting this message over and over and I have to remove X, Y, Z in order to see the other side. And I was talking to one student and she was saying, I need to quit my job. I've sat with it for a while because I can't see what's on the other side until it's gone. It's like a huge block in my path. So who knows what it will look like for you? So the last symptom. You are negative about everything. Your vibration has gotten lower and you feel grumpy. Your vibration is not as high as it used to be. What do I mean by this? A high vibration is joy, happiness, fun, laughing, lightheartedness. You don't get mad very quickly. That kind of vibe. When something was really dragging you down, it means it's a lower vibration. And if you're around something enough, your vibration is going to lower too. If you find yourself quick to anger, if you find yourself complaining, if you find yourself kind of being entrenched in the gossip, being in this place of resistance, being in this place of argumentativeness, whatever that looks like for you, if you feel negative, it's time to reevaluate and probably time for a pivot. That negative feeling can also go with a tantrum. 
So sometimes I knew I was air quotes here, supposed to work. And I was like, no, I'm going to sit on my bed and I'm going to binge watch whatever I want on Netflix. If I knew I needed to eat healthy, I'd be like, no, I'm going to eat my chocolate. So it's like this tantrum. And then sometimes that tantrum can be also combined with negativity, but negativity can just live on its own where you are not a happy person. I know that firsthand with my family. And if my family is not happy with their job or whatever is going on, even though it may have nothing to do with my relationship, when I see them coming in a lower vibration, it then does affect the relationship. So sometimes it shows up as little arguments between friends or family members, but it's really nothing to do with your relationship. It's just that person's in a more negative mindset and something needs to change around them. So let's just recap real fast. If you feel like you are getting the hunches, getting the messages, like the feeling, the knowing, maybe you hear it, you see it, time for a change. If you're not loving it anymore, time to reevaluate. If it's not easy anymore, and I gave you some parameters around that because that's just not an excuse we want to use, but when things aren't easy, it definitely makes you take a step back and reevaluate. Messages from your spirit guides, loud and clear. That's a symptom that it's time to change. If you're tired and drained, like your energy just gets sucked, like you're sitting there staring at the dark crystal. If you're not familiar with that movie, you should watch it. But that's what I will say, like, I'm staring at the computer and my energy is drained. It's like you're this juicy grape and then all of a sudden you do this activity and you turn into a raisin. If your inner child's throwing a tantrum, that's a big one. And then if you find yourself becoming more negative, it's time for a change. So time to trust your intuition. I think that is so very, very important. And if you're someone who knows it's time for a change and you want to plan the rest of your year with your intuition, I'd love to see you at my intuitive planning workshop. And you can attend this workshop when you become an aligned spiritual mentorship member. And I'm going to put that there in the show notes. And we also have some other fun bonuses as well. So I will be back next week with a brand new episode. But until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to stand spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.